Welcome back to Sales Training with Spence. My name is Spencer Williams. Today we're presenting about the power of referrals. My mission is to turn all entrepreneurs and novice salesmen into experts and provide them with the skills and motivation they need to succeed in their businesses. Now, today we're doing a sales presentation to Sales Training with Spence. I'm Spencer Williams. We're talking about referrals. So, referrals are very, very important, especially when it comes to sales. If you're in a sales job, then you understand if your company is not working with leads, you are working with cold calls with random people who don't know your company yet or haven't bought something for you. And that is about seven times harder than if you're working with a lead. So when you're cold calling someone, and this is what an old fact used to be, it takes seven times for the person to see your company, hear the advertisement, for you to maybe talk to them, for them to see your company around, for them to even make a decision to buy. And this was old, right? Now Tony Robbins released some new information as of 2017 that nowadays it takes 14 times for that prospect to see the information and to hear about your company to even make a decision. So when you're cold calling and you don't make a sale, the most important thing you can do for your company is ask them for a referral because even people who are working with leads, it costs the company $18 right now to get one lead which means every time the phone rings or every time you call someone who is given to you as a lead, that's an $18 call that your boss, that your company is paying just for you to have an opportunity to present to and hopefully make commissions on, right? So referrals are very important because you don't want an $18 prospect to go to waste. If it's not for them, ask them for a referral. So the best time that you can ask for a referral is actually right after the sale was made. So you got a guy, he's sitting down, you just sold him the blueprint, you just sold him a product from your company, and right after the sale was made, you ask him, hey John, before I go, before I go quickly, tell me, what, what was your favorite part about this product? And he tells you, oh man, I just loved how you're gonna get the deal done in eight weeks, and every eight weeks, as long as I follow this checklist, and you're like, hey John, do you know anybody who would possibly also love to get a deal done every single eight weeks? And that way, you're playing on the emotion that he felt, the reason why he was certain about buying it. You're bringing that back up to him. It's almost like a resell point for him. But also now he's more likely to give you someone because he feels good about it. That's the reason he feels good about it. So when you're asking him for somebody else, hopefully you can sell it to, he feels good about giving it to you because you referred that to the emotion that he felt when buying it, right? So, hey, John, what was your favorite part? Oh, I love this. Okay, is there anybody else you know that would also love that? And that way, he's already in, he bought it, we're using the emotion he felt, and he is in a state of certainty, so when he gives you another prospect, it, it's going to be good. And he's also going to probably maybe sell the person on it before he even gives you the person. Call up the person, hey man, I know this great company, I know you're going to love it, they're going to give you a call soon, I gave you their number. Right? He transfers over some certainty already, it's less work for you as a salesman when you get the referral, which is great. If you do not make the sale still ask for the referral and this can be a huge power move just because you don't sell on one person get the referral because that just saved your company eighteen dollars you could you could make your worth to the company just from getting tons of referrals man like you don't, you don't even have to sell something every referral you get is 18 bucks technically that you're saving the company right so on the non-sale you can also ask you you present it to him but he says not today maybe in a couple weeks maybe in a month and that's fine. Also, before we hop off the call, do you have somebody who, could, who this would be a value to as well? Do you have somebody who you think would be interested in a call about this type of stuff? Get the referral. They're not ready now, but maybe they know someone that is. Even on the rejection, you go through your whole entire presentation. They're not even at the not now part. They're at like, no, I don't even want this in general. Like, no, this is not for me. This product is not for me. Say, okay, that's fine. I completely understand this product is not for you. It's not the right time. But do you know somebody who could find this of value, right? So on the rejection, they say no, get a referral, get someone who you can. Even though they said no, get a yes out of them, right? Like get something from them. On the opening too, start off the conversation. Maybe maybe this is somebody who rejected you in the past and you forgot to ask for the referral. So you're calling them back and right away in the opening, you're like, hey Devin, I understand this product probably isn't for you and I understand you're not in the place to buy this right now, but do you happen to know anybody who could find this of value to them, right? And that way, right away, you, you're setting the tone like, man, don't worry, I'm not calling to annoy you. I want to know if you know anybody who could va find value in this, right? So referrals are extremely, extremely important. Just because you get a no from one person doesn't mean they don't know somebody who is going to give you a yes. Always ask for a referral so you are not wasting 
conversation, a call, not wasting a prospect, or so you are getting a new one. Sales channel expense. Nice, man.